Hello boys and girls, and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about equilibrium and Le Chatelier's principle. Now Le Chatelier's principle states the following. When a stress is placed upon a system at equilibrium, the system will shift in such a way as to relieve the stress. I have two quick demos set up that I hope will illustrate this to you. The first one involves a colorless gas, N2O4, at equilibrium with a brown gas, NO2. Now, both of these tubes are at equilibrium at different temperatures. This is in cold water, and we can see that the brown intensity is much less intense than the one in hot water. Now I'm going to switch these. I'm going to put the one that was in cold in the hot water, and the one that was hot in the cold water. And there's a stress being placed upon both of these. In one instance, the temperature is dropping. The other instance, the temperature is increasing. And we're going to find out how the equilibrium shifts when temperature is changed. Now let's suppose that this reaction is exothermic. I'm not saying that it is, we're supposing it is. If it were exothermic, and I increased the temperature, I made it hotter, that means that this equilibrium would shift to the left to get away from this heat. And when I made it hotter, I would expect it to go colorless. Hmm, is that what happened? When I made it hotter, did it get colorless? Seems like the intensity of the brown's increasing, doesn't it? And when it got colder, the intensity of the brown is decreasing. So if this were an exothermic reaction, heat's on the right and I increase the temperature, I would expect it to shift left when I increase the temperature and it become more colorless, which it is not. So perhaps this reaction is endothermic and heat is on the left-hand side of the equation. Let's see, if I were to heat this reaction up, the stress, of course, would be an increase in heat and this system would shift once again to move itself away from the heat, which would be to the right this time and it would become more brown. So when I heated it up, I would expect it to go right if it were exothermic, excuse me, endothermic. And sure enough, it does. It becomes a more intense brown. Likewise, if I cooled it down, it would shift to go towards the heat, and it would become more colorless. And that's exactly what happened. Let me put these next to each other again. You can see the one that was colder became less intense. That means it shifted to the N2O4 side to go towards the heat. The one that was hot shifted towards the NO2 side. It became a darker brown, so it shifted away from the heat, and that's exactly what we saw. Okay, the next quick demo, let's put this away, is between the chromate and the dichromate ion. Let me turn my stirrer on. Let's try stirring it, there we go. And the chromate ion is a yellow color. The dichromate ion is an orange color. And right now, it's at equilibrium. I'm not going to mess with the temperature this time. This time, I'm going to change the pH. I'm going to be adding acid and base. And I'm going to see which direction this equilibrium shifts when I add an acid or base to it. So this reaction happens to be um, an acidic reaction where H pluses or protons are on the left-hand side of the equation. If that's true, when I add an acid to this system at equilibrium, when I shift to the right to move away from the acid, and this should turn orange. So I have some one molar hydrochloric acid here. We'll add some acid and we'll see if this shifts to the right and forms the orange dichromate. And sure enough, that's exactly what we see. When I added acid, we shifted to the right to move away from the acid, and we form the dichromate ion. Now, what would happen if I removed H pluses? How can you take away H pluses from a reaction? Well, if I add a base to this, if I add hydroxides to this, won't that, in effect, remove protons out of this reaction because they'll react with the OH minuses to form water? And if I remove H pluses, it should shift left to replace those and it should turn yellow. So I have some one molar sodium hydroxide. We'll add this to the system at equilibrium, and we hope to see it turn yellow, and sure enough, it does. So in effect, when I add hydroxides to this, they remove H pluses, they react with the H pluses to form water, and I shift left to replace those. Let's do it one more time. Once again, if I add an acid, it'll shift right, because I'm having excess acid, the stress will cause it to move away from the acid side, and it should turn orange. So we'll add our hydrochloric acid, and there we go, it goes orange again. And one more time, if I add a base, it will shift left to replace the, o, the H pluses that I'm removing, and it should turn yellow. So here we go. 
And we could do this all day. We could go back and forth between orange and yellow, shifting the equilibrium by placing a stress on the system. I hope that helps, folks. Have a good day.